everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome to the 2022 Stash Down Challenge. This is a really fun project that we do every year. We've been doing it for several years now, and it's a great way to use up odds and ends in your yarn collection. Now, a lot of times we make projects and we have just a few yards left and we don't know what to do with it. And um, for me personally, I just can't imagine throwing a ball of yarn away. So it kind of just sits around, right? And it, it collects and we don't really have a purpose for it. Sometimes we do, but a lot of times we have a lot of yarn that's just kind of sitting around. So what I've been doing for the past few years is collecting all the little yarn scraps I have from projects past and I keep them in a bin. And at the beginning of each year, I start a granny square. Now we've done other types of squares in the past, but the granny square seems to be the one that everybody likes doing the most. It's easy, it's fun. And I take all different yarn, like you can see here. This is the one from 2021. So we've wrapped this one up and we're gonna start our uh, one for the new year. But as you can see, there are all kinds of colors and I hold several strands together and that's why you see all these fun little color changes. We use a large hook, we use whatever we have and we hold several strands together. So we're gonna start our new one today, but I wanted to show you this one because this was from last year and you can really get a sense of kind of what you're gonna end up with. Now, I hold several strands and if you use multiple balls of odds and ends, um, they're going to run out at different times, so what I simply do is tie a new piece on, keep going, tie a new piece on, and then it just keeps going and going. That's why you see here, this coral color has a little bit of beige in this section, has a little bit of silver through here, it has a little bit of blue through here, and it just makes for a really interesting blanket. At the end of the year, you can use this as a throw in your home. You can donate it. You can give it as a gift for the holidays next year. You could even use, um, I know a lot of people have said they um, will gift it to their pet. So their pet has their very own blanket too out of some scraps of yarn. So it's a fun project and a lot of you make multiple uh, stash down blankets each year. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna show you how to do the granny square. I'm gonna give you a little bit of tips for working with all these strands of yarn. And we're gonna talk about the supplies next. So the project that we're gonna be doing uses very minimal supplies. I encourage you, this is my giant stash down bin. I keep this around all year round. And let me just turn it. When I've finished a project, what I'll do is if I have a little bit of yarn, I throw it in the bin, have another little bit of yarn, throw it in the bin. So it's all different types of yarn, all different weights and textures, and it's totally fine if your yarn isn't the same weight or doesn't match, totally fine. I'm gonna show you how to kind of accommodate that. Now, you'll need a pair of scissors, and you'll need a large tapestry needle. We're gonna be using a very large hook, so you're gonna need a big needle with a large eye to weave in any ends. Now, when I'm doing the blanket, I weave the ends in as I go, but you may have some that stick out that you need to trim or weave in, so it is good to have that. And of course, the very last round you'll do, you'll need to weave in the ends of that. Um, over the years, I've used a large hook and I hold several, several strands together. That allows me to kind of customize my strands. So I'm getting about the same thickness. So sometimes I hold four strands of very thin yarn. Sometimes I hold one or two strands of a thicker yarn. Um, I'm gonna be using a 10 millimeter P crochet hook. Let me just zoom in a little so you can see better. This is a large hook. Um, and again, it allows me to accommodate multiple strands very well. Um, this is my Frill Streamline. As a side note, I'll put the link down below if you'd like to get one for yourself. This is a nice um, hook, uh, very lightweight, comfortable in the hand, etc. So a 10 millimeter P hook, scissors, tapestry needle. Now let's pull some of this yarn out because I want to show you some of the yarn that I have here. Now some of this still has cake cuffs on it. Um, I have some here that's very thick and heavy. Uh, let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see better. And I have some here. This is was very fine, was from one of my uh, garments that I made this year. You may recognize some of this if you've watched some of my videos. But throughout the year, I just keep throwing uh, yarn in my bin. I'm trying to find some of different weights here. This one is a linen. It's very, very fine. I use that for my little flutter tank and then some medium weight yarn. And you can see some of it is just small amounts, but I just, throughout the year, just toss it in the spin. Every time I'm done with a project and I just have a little bit of yarn left and I don't wanna toss it, um, I throw it in the spin. 
I also use this bin, this scrap bin, for when if I have a pillow or if I'm making like a stuffy or something like that, I will use some of this same yarn to stuff things with as well. So it's always this like handy bin I keep around and I keep it in an accessible place so as I finish I just toss it in. So we're gonna start the granny square together. We're gonna learn how to make a granny square. If you're not familiar with the granny square, I'm gonna walk you through it stitch by stitch. If you've made a granny square before, um, you may wanna still follow along because I'm gonna kind of show you how to hold the strands together. So I grabbed a few here and we're gonna hold a couple of these together. Now, it is very easy if you have a big giant scrap bin like I do, it's very easy to run into uh, tangles and snags. Um, if you're not too attached to the yarn and you're okay with just cutting it, that's fine. Um, it's scrap yarn, it's not, um, you know, yarn that is super special and you've kind of used it for something else. If you've also bought yarn and you never had a purpose for it, you could also incorporate it into your blanket. This is sort of like a all things go, anything is possible kind of project. So I'm gonna kind of straighten out my yarn here. It's kind of a mess and we're gonna rejoin and I'm gonna show you how to get started with your square. Okay, so what I like to do is grab all the strands and here I have this is like a, a worsted weight, this is a bulky weight, and then these, this is probably a worsted weight, I can't remember now, and then this is like a, a sock yarn weight, okay? So I'm gonna kind of line up the bottoms, and for some people, if this helps you, um, you could tie a little knot at the bottom as well, see how it's moving around, just to keep everything a little bit snug and secure while you're getting started, okay? And then I don't like all that bulk, so I'm gonna give mine a trim. So I have my strand and we're just going to pretend and act as if this is one strand of yarn. You're just gonna crochet as if this is one big bulky strand of yarn. So you can mix and match the colors. I have some neutrals here, but I'm not gonna stay neutral for the blanket. I'm gonna incorporate all different colors, okay? So grab your hook and we're just gonna begin by making a basic granny square. Okay, so what we need to do is just take the strand down the front of your hand. We're gonna wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Again, we're pretending this is just one strand. It might feel a little bit um, cumbersome at first and feel kind of weird until you get used to uh, working with multiple strands if you've never done that before. I try to also keep my yarn sort of lined up up here. Um, I don't like to work out of the bin um, because it tends to get more tangly. I like to take what I'm working with currently and just sort of keep it away from everything else. All right, we're not gonna worry about this tail right now. And what we're gonna do is we're going to chain four. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and see how sometimes those pop off. It's okay, just pull it out and redo it. That was three and four. Sometimes with those multiple strands, you may not catch them all at once. Totally happens all the time. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is create a loop that will work the stitches into. You can already see how fun this is with all these different colors. Go into the chain farthest from our hook and insert into that chain farthest from your hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook and that's our slip stitch that will create the ring. Now we have a ring here. So then what we're gonna do is remember those tails from the beginning? We're gonna hold those along the edge as we work. That will weave that in as we go along. With this project in particular, you'll wanna make sure that you weave in everything as you go along as much as possible. That will definitely save you because it's a lot of yarn, okay? Let's start the first round of our granny square. What we're gonna do is chain three, one, two, and three, and then in the center of this ring here, we're gonna work two double crochet, still holding that tail, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the center of the ring and bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Make sure everything is straightened out, nice and neat before you keep going. And one of my strands is not cooperating, so I'm gonna just fix it a little. Okay, so that was one double crochet. We're gonna do another double crochet into the center of the ring. Yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. 
Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain one, still holding that tail along the edge as we work, and we're gonna work three double crochets into the center of the ring. So one double crochet, work your second double crochet into the center of the ring. That's two. Work your third double crochet into the center of the ring. And that's three, okay? Next, uh, I also wanted to mention, we're still holding the tail along the edges we work, but if you also need to slide your stitches over to give yourself more room in the ring, feel free to do that as well. I definitely do that throughout. Then we're gonna chain one. Then we're gonna work three more double crochet into the center of the ring. So one, keeping those strands straightened out. This will be one of the uh, challenges of the stash down challenge is just managing all this yarn, but you will use so much of it and it's a very satisfying project. Okay, next double crochet. So we did one, we're doing number two. And then we're gonna work our third double crochet. And then chain one, okay? All right, coming up around here, I think my my beginning of my square looks very wintry. I really like it, it looks kind of like a snowstorm. Sliding things over if we need to. We did our chain one. Then we're gonna work three more double crochets. One, holding that tail, two, and three. Okay, so We'll do one more chain one, just like that. Get everything straightened out here. And then what we're gonna do is join to close the ring with the slip stitch. So remember that chain three we did at the beginning of the round? We're gonna go one, two, three, that third chain up and join with a slip stitch. So insert the hook into that chain, third chain up, wrap your own round hook and bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. and round one is complete. So then we're gonna move on to round two. We're gonna work round two, but I'm also gonna show you if you run out of one of your colors. Now I have plenty here. I'm just gonna cut it so you can kinda get an idea of what I mean here, just so we can tie a new one on. But before I like to continue with round two, I'm gonna pull this tail that we held along the edge and give it a snip. Um, as much as possible, if you could keep your tails trimmed as you're weaving them and they're hanging out, um, it will keep things nice and neat for you. Okay, so you should have a little like plus sign here, okay? These are the corners that we worked. Now, when you're sticking with the same yarn with what we're doing here, because we're just tying it on and keeping going and things like that, um, we, we're not in the right position to begin the new round for round two. So we need to slip stitch over to that first corner space, which is way over here. So in the tops of these um, double crochets that we worked, we're gonna slip stitch over, so go, Insert the hook into that first stitch, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Slip stitch into the next one. We're just getting our hook in the proper position to begin round two. And then we're gonna go right in that space and work a split, slip stitch as well, okay? Get a little bit more yarn if you need to, straighten things out. And then what we're gonna do for round two is once again, we're gonna chain three. One, two, three and then we're going to work three double crochet into that same space or two double crochet excuse me into that same space one and then see how your your when your yarn is really small like this and it's not a nice neat ball anymore it kind of creeps over you could technically have like some multiple yarn bowls going on here if you want to um, so anyway, we did one double crochet. We're gonna do a second double crochet into that same space. And then we're gonna chain one to create a corner once again. And then in that same space, we're gonna work three double crochet. So one, two, get a little bit more yarn and straighten things out. See how it just, get a little cumbersome, and three, just like that. Okay, so we have our first corner complete. 
Then we're going to chain one, and then that group of three double crochet, we're gonna skip over that in that next corner space. What we're gonna do this time is work three double crochet. One, two, keeping things nice and neat, and three. Chain one, and in that same space, we're gonna work three more double crochet. One, two, and three. And as you can see, this is a big fluffy granny square so far. That's why we use this big P crochet hook. You can see it's very cushy and cozy. Okay, hop over to that next space chain one, skip over that next double crochet grouping that we did, and we're gonna do another corner. Three double crochet, one, two, and three. Straighten our yarn out. We've used a lot of yarn already as a side note. Okay, so we did three double crochet, and then we're gonna chain one, and I'm crocheting hair into it. Have you ever had that happen before? I'm sure everyone has. Um, chain one, and then three more double crochet in that same space. Same thing we did before. One, two, and three. This um, gray yarn has been the problem yarn. The other ones are just nice and neat and kind of gliding along. Okay, so we have the next corner complete. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain one and we're gonna hop over to that last grouping. So you have that three double crochet grouping in that corner space here and we're gonna do the same exact three thing. Three double crochet, one, two, three, whoops. See this? This means I didn't incorporate one of my strands. So you may run into that. I was wondering if that was gonna happen. I was kind of hoping so I could show you. Okay, so let's do that third double crochet again. Sometimes you, when you draw your hook through, it doesn't catch them all. So you can, if you have a big kind of loop sticking out, you'll know that you didn't catch one of those loops. Okay, so we did three double crochet, then chain one, then three more double crochet into that corner space. So. One, let's get some more yarn here. One, two, and three. Just like that, okay? Look at our cute square, already it's huge. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit because it is getting bigger. Now what we're gonna do is chain one, and we're gonna join once again in that third chain up. One, two, three. Join with a slip stitch to close the yarn, or close the round rather. And then we're ready to move on to round three. Now round three is gonna be the round we'll use for the entire rest of our blanket. We're just gonna keep repeating. We'll do the corners the same way, but now we have sides. So you can see there is an opening here in the side of our square. So as we work more rounds, we're gonna do corner, side, corner, side, and, and so forth. As your square grows, it'll be corner, side, side, corner. And then the next round will be corner, side, 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 corner, and so forth. Let's get started with round three. And then what I'm gonna do is snip one of these colors and tie a new one on just to kind of show you how I do it, okay? You just keep going. It's just like this whole long thing and you don't really stop at the end of a round. You just kind of tie it on as it, as it runs out, okay? So once again, we need to get our hook in the right position for round three. So we're going to slip stitch over to that first corner space that we come to, okay? So just in each one of those stitches, work a slip stitch. What we're doing is, without creating any height or stitches, we're getting our hook in the right place. Now also work into that corner space with a slip stitch, and we're ready to begin round three. Now we're in that corner space where we need to be. So what we're gonna do is chain three, one, 
two, three to start the new row. Then we're going to work two double crochet because that chain three counts as one of our double crochets. That's why we only do two at first. So one double crochet and look at these, these yarn balls creeping back over. So one double crochet we just did, then two double crochet. Okay. Then we're going to chain one to create that corner space. And then in that same corner space, we're going to work three more double crochet. One, two, and three. Just like that, okay? And then we can work a side. We haven't done a side yet. So we're gonna chain one. And then to work the side, see in that side space right there, we're just gonna work three double crochet, no big deal. So one, two, and three. Okay, now we're gonna finish the round together, but I'm gonna also, we're gonna act as if maybe this gray, maybe we kind of just ran out of this gray. I'm cutting mine, but if you run out, and look, let's say this is the end of our yarn ball. So we need to tie on a new yarn. So I'm gonna grab another color and we'll tie it on and keep it. Okay, I went in my yarn stash and I grabbed this like hottest hot pink ever. It's like neon pink. So you can really see how we're gonna add some color into this. And don't worry about things matching. The last blanket I, showed, I did last year that I showed you at the beginning of this video, um, I did not worry about matching anything and I absolutely love the way it came out. So I'm just going to be very random this year and it's kind of a surprise and it's kind of fun to see how it turns out. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the yarn that's running out and the new yarn. So we're just going to tie it together with a nice knot. And then we're just going to keep on going. Okay, so we have new strands to kind of lay out and straighten out. And we will have these little ends here. And that's okay, you can just, we're just gonna crochet them right in. And then if they're kind of popping out, we'll take our scissors and snip them and that's it, okay? Very easy. Okay, so we just did a side. We're gonna chain one and now we're at a corner again. So go into that corner space and we're just gonna work the round, the rest of the round together, but with this new color, you can really see it travel through. Okay, so work your corner the same way we've been doing, three double crochet, one, and look, I'm at that spot where I um, tied the new yarn on already. So I'm just crocheting it right in, as if nothing changed, okay? So one double crochet, and that if you, if you have that knot there, it might be a little snug to pull it through. Just do the best you can. So one double crochet, and there's an end. It's okay if it pops out, we can trim them later. Two double crochet. Get that yarn straightened out. This was a cake and the cake is sort of coming apart on this one, but it's okay, it's okay. All right, and then three double crochet. And as you can see on the back, we can just snip these off later. So three double crochet, just like that. All right, now we have kind of a new strand situation here. So we're gonna chain one and then slide things over. This is something else that can be snipped later. No big deal. Slide things over if you need to and work three double crochet in that same space. One, two, and three. I think this pink looks really cool going through this. Okay, so you know what, right here and there, let's, um, I like to flip my tails over to the back and do it. I like to snip them right as they happen, get them out of the way, uh, without trimming your stitches, just trim them kind of flush to the back and then they're gone, okay? And that was it. All right, let's continue around with our round here. So we did our corner, now we're gonna chain one and now we're at a side. So remember our sides were three double crochet. One, two, and three. This pink is traveling over again. Again, if you need to use some yarn bowls, 
you have more than one, it might be helpful. Okay, so we did our side, chain one. Let's do the next corner. Three double crochet, one, two, three double crochet, then chain one, then three more double crochet all in that corner space. One, two double crochet, and three double crochet for that corner. And you can see how fun it is to add new colors in, okay? We went from very, very neutral to this really fun pop of color, and it'll just continue to change and evolve throughout your blanket. Then we're gonna chain one, then we're at a side again. So remember, three double crochet, one, two, three, Then we're gonna chain one, then we're ready to do a corner again. We're at a corner. So remember, it's three double crochet. One, two, three. And then we're gonna chain one to create that corner space. And then three more double crochet in the same corner space. One, two, and three, chain one, then we're in a side again, and we're almost at the beginning right here. Okay, so let's do our side, three double crochet. Let's get our yarn straightened out. Okay, one double crochet, two double crochet, three, double crochet, chain one, and now we're at the beginning. So we're gonna go, same thing we did before, count three chains up, one, two, three, insert it into that third chain up with a slip stitch, bring up that loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And then our round three is complete. So at this point, at all of our yarn strands here, at this point, now, when I'm not working on mine, I just put it in the same bin as all the scraps and kind of keep it together. If you want to keep this stuff from getting, um, to prevent it from getting tangled, you could drop it into like a project bag and then put it in the bin with the scraps. But I like to sort of tote it around and keep it all together. You could put it in like a large Ziploc bag or something like that. Now, for the rest of your blanket, what you're gonna do is keep repeating round three over and over and over again when you run out of one of your strand colors, just tie a new one on like I showed you. And if you need to back up the video and see round three again, feel free to do that as well. Now, as this grows and evolves, the colors will change um, and it'll really be a fun display. Now, for the challenge, the challenge will, will run all year and I'll reveal the finished blanket at the end of the year, the beginning of the new year. And, um, 2023, which sounds really weird and far away, but um, we're gonna work on this all year. Just add to a little bit at a time. We'll add more scraps to the bin as we go along and it will continue to grow. I'm also gonna do some updates throughout the year so you can see how it's um, changing and uh, definitely share yours as well. Use the hashtag FiberFluxCal, um, tag me on social media. I love to see what you all are doing and I can't wait to see how all of your blankets will look as well. I'll be sharing this in the Facebook group and the Ravelry group as well so you can connect with other makers and see what they're doing too. We also we have seasonal crochet alongs throughout the year. We have a spring, summer, fall, and holiday at the end of the year. So keep working on this all year round. I can't wait to see what you all come with up with and all the scraps that you've incorporated into yours. So I will check in throughout the year and show you mine and um, I'll share it on social media as well. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click that subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again.